Welcome to the Regulating AI podcast. Artificial intelligence stands at the forefront of technological evolution, with experts predicting that it'll add trillions of dollars to our GDP and impact our workforce and national security in ways that we can't imagine. So the question arises, how do we regulate it without stifling innovation? The United States Congress is currently working to put up a legislative framework around artificial intelligence. This has resulted in multiple hearings, listening sessions, and proposed legislation. Our podcast features insights from a broad spectrum of perspectives, industry leaders, members of Congress, advocacy groups, labor unions, and civil liberty proponents. Together, they address pivotal questions that are needed to create practical and sensible legislation. I'm very excited to have Congressman Raja Krishnamurti with us today. He represents the Illinois 8th District in the House of Representatives. He's the ranking member on the Select Committee on the Strategic Competition between the United States and the Chinese Communist Party. Also, he serves on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. I invited him on this show as he has tremendous exposure to the national security implications of artificial intelligence, given his leadership on key congressional committees. Welcome, Congressman. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you on the Regulating AI podcast. Hey, Sanjay, great to be with you. Great. Uh, Congressman, just let's uh, dive straight into it. Do you believe that artificial intelligence needs to be regulated in the United States by the Congress? Absolutely. I think that it's vital that AI needs to be regulated. Of course, the question is how and what are the principles that guide that? That's a great point. Congressman, we have many different agencies that currently regulate different aspects of AI, the FTC, DOL, Department of Justice. Some of your colleagues have proposed to create a separate regulatory agency. Do you think that is necessary, Congressman? I'm not sure. I'm open to considering whether a new agency is required for this particular task. On the other hand, I also know that in Washington, D.C., A, it's not easy to establish a new agency, and B, the establishment of the agency itself can become a political football. And so rather than get distracted by that particular issue, I think the more important issue is making sure the government regulates in this area in an effective and timely fashion. That's absolutely on the point. Congressman, as the EU is already marching ahead in terms of their legislation, and you know what happened with the data privacy regulation where they had something on the books and we could not get something. So the fear is that if we don't get our act together, we might have the repeat of something similar. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think we'll have something in time to get something on the books here? I think we have to, Sanjay. And my concern isn't so much about the Europeans, although obviously they are competitors to us in a lot of ways. My bigger concern is about the Chinese Communist Party putting in place certain regulations which might go against our values and that might also give an advantage to their companies and entities that are developing AI models. You know, that's obviously has serious national security implications. Congressman, what are some of the things that you would like to see in the legislation that is being proposed? Obviously, there's a variety of things, but what are some of the key things that you would like to see? The way I think about it is I think of something called the PAST model, mm -hmm. and it's a P-A-S-T. And I say past because past is usually prologue for the future. We want to repeat our successes and avoid our failures. What does PAST stand for? First of all, P stands for privacy. We have to respect the privacy of those individuals or entities whose data is actually used in any training of AI models. That's very essential. We can't have a situation such as, for instance, in China, where the Chinese Communist Party routinely not only uses the data of, for instance, Uyghurs and ordinary Chinese citizens to inform their data models, but then uses those data models and AI to invade privacy. So both on the front end, but also on the back end, we have to respect privacy. privacy. The A in the past 
the way I think about the past model, it stands for accountability. We can't repeat the failures of social media where unfortunately companies who had created social media platforms were somehow insulated or became immune from any consequences associated with nefarious behavior that was predictable with their platforms. The S in PAST stands for security. We have to make sure that these AI models adopt some minimal cybersecurity standards so that they are not hacked and used again for nefarious purposes. And then finally, the T stands for transparency. We have to have full transparency as the algorithms that inform these AI models so we can then understand whether they contain any biases as well as what is being used as the logic for determining future results. No, that I think is a great model, Congressman PAST. I'm going to use that. And I have a trademark on it, so I get 10% <laughs> of anything you get. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. But I think it covers to a large extent what some of the concerns have been expressed. Congressman, obviously, you have seen a lot of large companies, whether it's OpenAI, Microsoft, et cetera. You've seen them in hearings coming in and saying, regulate us. The fear that some of the upstart companies, and you talked about stifling innovation, there might be some regulatory capture that will be set up by these large companies so that it becomes a real roadblock for them to do that. Is that a concern for you? Sure. And I think that's why policymakers, lawmakers, regulators have to be very careful to get as many voices informing their decision making so that there isn't that regulatory capture, that they do hear differing viewpoints and are sensitive to the different points of view and adopt what is really in the best interest of the country, not any one company or industry. That's a very good point. Obviously, it's a little hard to do. Congressman, there is now open sourcing of some of these large language models. Meta has put out Llama 2, et cetera. Obviously, there are two sides to this equation. People say it obviously creates innovation, and it's really spurred a lot of early innovation. But there are others who say, hey, it could end up in the wrong hands. What are your thoughts about some of these open sourcing of some of these large language models, Congressman? I actually am intrigued. I think that open sourcing of these AI models means that there can be more participants in utilizing these AI models. Of course, it could also mean potentially bad actors getting access to those open source models and using them for nefarious purposes. And so I think that we have to go eyes wide open into this kind of situation, but I don't think that we should necessarily stifle innovation or experimentation just yet. I think that we want to make sure that we as the government kind of observe, learn, and then enter the fray, so to speak, in an informed fashion. Yeah. So what you're saying is you're for it, but obviously want to do it carefully going into it because it has created a lot of innovation that is happening out there, Congressman. I think that my concern is this, which is you were talking about the small business people or any entity or not-for-profit or even individuals or students, we want them to be able to participate in the AI revolution in a productive and positive fashion. They need to have access to tools, whether it's provided through this open sourcing model that you talked about that Meta generated or others. If we cut them off from access to these tools, then we're not going to see the innovation. We're not going to see the experiments and the blossoming of different models. Of course, you could also have, I don't know, you could have a non-state actor have access to those tools or even our adversaries or competitors have access and then take advantage against us. But we've always been an open society, as you know, mm -hmm. and openness has generally been favored by our population over other attributes. That's true, that is very true. Congressman, the implications of AI for medicine, education, especially thinking about people in remote rural areas, the options that it could provide are going to be tremendous. 
What are your thoughts in terms of making sure our population, there is no digital divide as far as AI is concerned. You talked about the social media lessons to be learned, but this is an opportunity to start from clean slate. What are your thoughts? I agree 100%. When I think about AI, I'm both concerned about the pitfalls, but I'm also excited about the possibilities. And one of those possibilities is using AI to level the playing field in so many different areas, including, for instance, education. One of the most exciting or innovative uses of AI will be in individualized education for children and students from the very beginning levels of education, where you know AI will help to level the playing field in terms of access to good teachers or access to good facilities. You could imagine every child having a tablet and the tablet becoming almost like a personal tutor. The tutor assesses what your skills are and where you're having problems. And then it gives you challenges or gamifies the experience so that you learn better. Imagine what that would do for children in villages or in underserved areas around the world. And I'm just so excited by that concept that AI can provide individualized help, almost like your personal teacher, personal professor, personal assistant. In medicine, as you mentioned, it could similarly revolutionize the way that people take care of themselves. You know, my father, he's an 83-year-old Indian American, one of my heroes. He loves to give advice to everybody in the family about what he thinks their ailment, physical ailment is, and maybe they should have a little bit of this Ayurvedic medicine or that Ayurvedic medicine or this, you know, thing. And it's very charming. But on a more serious note, if you can imagine AI on your computer or tablet being able to both monitor your symptoms and then to suggest what you should be doing to get better, I think that would be amazing. It would go one step beyond WebMD, right? Yeah. So where you're actually getting informed advice based on your own individual situation. I think great idea, especially the personalized education. Wow. I think there's a great entrepreneurial idea because as you said, people in inner cities, rural areas, imagine because every child is different. And I think you touched on it. I think that's a fantastic idea. One thing. Unfortunately, we have a lot of children with autism as well as individual disabilities. Yes. We don't have the resources. We're not able to provide enough resources, even though we should, in making sure that they get up to speed and get mainstreamed into our educational system. I could easily see AI being used to help them to climb faster. And I think getting to a place where they can become even more productive citizens and able to realize their potential. So I'm just really excited about that possibility. Congressman, is that the role that entrepreneurs need to take or is there a role for main, also there's a role for Congress or in something like this, because this is revolutionary. You bring up a great point. I think entrepreneurs are gonna lead the way and they should. And I think there's nothing wrong with them, in fact, being encouraged to kind of lead the way. And as you know, some of our greatest innovation comes from entrepreneurs. At the same time, I could easily see, for instance, DARPA or NASA or other agencies that require AI to be used in certain ways on an expedited timetable, taking up the challenge on their own to push the envelope, even at the same time that we're also creating an, kind of an entrepreneurial ecosystem for innovation. In other words, we could see AI being, AI innovation happening at DARPA, at IARPA, in national labs, but also the entrepreneurial ecosystem at universities, elsewhere, and hopefully among all those different places, a thousand flowers bloom. And if a thousand flowers bloom, you could see some real breakthroughs that hopefully capture the imagination of the general public and get scaled up in even bigger ways. That's a great point, Congressman. Congressman, we have as elections coming up in 2024 and the prediction... I heard. <laughs> and the prediction is that 
this is going to be an unusual election with AI playing a big role with deep fakes and things like that. Does that concern you, Congressman? Oh, yeah, big time. I think that one of the big concerns we have is that state and non-state actors abroad may try to interfere in our elections in the U.S. using deep fakes. I think there was an article in September talking about how the CP, the Chinese Communist Party, was starting to use certain deep fakes online to lead people to believe that there was certain material coming out of the Black Lives Matter movement or other organizations when it wasn't actually the case. Mm -hmm. You could also see deep fakes being utilized to mimic people, candidates, elected officials. And so people like me were always concerned that somebody who intended to do something nefarious with our elections could kind of really sow confusion and chaos in the populace, you know, in the run up to 2024. I think some of my colleagues have actually introduced legislation with regard to this particular topic. I think we should look at it. And I think we should, again, we should be open to the possibility that we need to put preventive measures in place so that we don't end up with certain consequences that would be really bad for all of us. Yeah. And some of it is already out in the system, as you rightly said, and this is going to be an unusual election. Congressman, you have a key role in a committee on China, as we've discussed. We, the U.S. has banned the exports of some semiconductors, especially specialized semiconductors that could be used for AI to China. What are your views on that? I think the Biden administration has done a terrific job of identifying the fact that certain very high-end semiconductors are being used in ways that go against either our security or our values. They might be utilized to help modernize the People's Liberation Army in ways that could really be harmful to us. They could be used in surveillance systems to persecute the Uyghurs or Tibetans or Hong Kongers or dissidents in ways that really violate our values. And so we should put controls with regard to those high-end semiconductors. I think the balance is going to be on putting those controls in place while at the same time and allowing for our semiconductor industry as well as companies to flourish worldwide and making sure that we've set very good controls in place that prevent the bad stuff, so to speak, or the most sensitive stuff, I should say, from getting into the hands of the wrong people while not necessarily ending our trade in semiconductors with the People's Republic of China. I and Mike Gallagher, my, the chairman of my committee, have asked the Biden administration to tighten the controls in certain ways because we feel that there, there are workarounds that are undermining the effectiveness of the controls as they were set forth on October 7th of last year. But overall, we have to still maintain a balance. Yeah. Some of these companies that you talked about are saying it's actually pushing China to create local semiconductors and which could come back in a way hurting us. We are losing sales, et cetera. But obviously, this is a matter of national security. Any response to those companies like NVIDIA and others? I think they bring up a point. I would respectfully submit that those Chinese entities are going to be developing their own high-end chips, regardless of what we do. In fact, they have been trying, but they have not been succeeding. Why? I'm not sure. But I think a part of the reason why they're not able to succeed is because, again, I have a theory that in the People's Republic of China, where the CCP really clamps down on freedom of thought, freedom to go against the grain, the freedom to disagree with the conventional wisdom that you are also hurting innovation and you are harming the ability of entrepreneurs to think big and to make big bets and risky bets. And so I think that is getting in the way of their economic development. It's starting to show in different ways. And I suspect it doesn't help what they're trying to do with regard to semiconductor innovation. All that said, I still think that NVIDIA should be able to sell low-end chips or 
things that are already available on the world market to different countries. But with regard to its highest end chips, I still think that those are too sensitive in the hands of the wrong people. That's a good point. Congressman, final question, knowing the tight schedule you have. Right now, obviously, there is a little bit of uh, confusion in Congress. Is that going to impact getting AI regulation for us? And do you have any predictions of the timing when something will be, I mean, it had been said, I think Senator Schumer had said he's going to try to get it before the end of the year, but that's looking a little bit more and more difficult. I like the fact that Majority Leader Schumer is really thinking ambitiously about putting in place rules of the road, so to speak, with regard to AI sooner rather than later. I think right now we're going through certain challenges in Congress with regard to, for instance, the leadership of the Republican caucus and then funding the government that I would like to see what Leader Schumer has in mind and we should consider it. I think whether that will actually become law before the end of this calendar year is perhaps another issue altogether. But I think definitely within this Congress, we should address this. Wonderful. Congressman, thank you so much for this very informative session. Helps a lot as we march down this process of regulating AI. So thank you for taking the time, Congressman. You got it, Sanjay. Thanks for covering this vital topic. Thank you.